this is like take three because the last time I tried to do this I kept getting phone calls. Why is it whenever things like phone call when it comes to things like phone calls, they never happen a whole lot, but the moment you're trying to do something, that's when they when things like a bunch of phone calls or people coming at the door happen. I don't know. Anyway, today we are going to be covering my N64 video game collection. As I stated in my um, other video, which was three parts long, thank you YouTube Limit, uh, that uh, covered my NES and Super NES collections. Now, let's begin, shall we? Because we have just as many games in this collection to cover as my Super NES. Let's see here. Which one first? Ah. Donkey Kong Country 64. This game is not only notorious as being one of the good Donkey uh, 3D Donkey Kong games, but also has fun mini games, fun things to do, and I guess since you need a certain number of bananas to get to each level, you could consider this another Mario 64 clone. But this is one of the ones that are actually fun to play, sort of, in 60, Mario 64 clones. Also, not only is this game uh, good because it has a good plot, good mini games, new good new characters, new good uh, members of the, of the Kong family entered in here, but it is also notorious for another thing, and I'll get to that when we get to the game in question. Uh, let's see. Oh, and we just so happen to have this game. The right up, the game right here that's in question with the Donkey Kong Country game, Banjo, Banjo Kazooie. This game has um, a sequel which is called Banjo Tootie, and it recently got an, and that game recently got a sequel called uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and this was that happened after Rare was bought by Microsoft. Now. What I was getting at with these two games here, there is a theory. I don't know if this is true or not, but there is a theory among fans that these two games are linked by Banjo-Kazooie's stop and swoop thing. What people believe is, is that Rare possibly had the idea, I think this is only fan assumed. I'm not sure if Rare really had this idea. I think this is fan assumed that um, these two games being linked by Stop and Swoop due to references to each other inside the games that uh, there was this cartridge swoop thing where you had to put one or the other game into the N64, unlock it, and then you had to take the first cartridge out and put the other one in and you could get the st stop and swoop and figure out what the eggs and, and the ice cube were all about. Now, I don't know if Rare really had that idea. I'm just saying I think it's fan assumed. I don't know a whole lot about stop and swoop. But if you want to know more about this, I've read a little bit about it on a website called uh, The Rare Witch Project. I'll probably put it in the description box. Also, aside from that, the Banjo-Kazooie series, along with its sequel, is notorious for two things. One, funny cultural references, and two, adult humor. Now, before my parents out there thinking of allowing their kids to play the games um, for the first time start going nuts, let me explain. The d adult humor is very well hidden within this game, okay? For example, when I first played this game, I was young. Uh, I forget how old I was, but I was young enough to where I didn't understand adult humor too well, or I didn't catch on to it as much. Like, uh, the thing with Gobi Desert. There was this coconut tree, and I forget what hit, I think it was Tanup, I, I can't remember its name. There was a coconut tree, and he said he was dying of thirst and shriveling up, and Kazooie made the comment of, hey, how are your nuts today, or something along those lines, and B Banjo yelled at him. Now, I didn't catch on to the joke, so I thought since it was a coconut tree, he was talking 
about coconuts. But now that I'm older and I'm 21 years old, going on 22, I know for a fact that that's clearly not the case. Um, and when I asked my dad what, what was Banjo getting so angry about, my dad said, um, they put a dirty joke in here, ask me when you're older. Uh, but I don't need to ask him when I'm older because I hear a lot worse crap at college. <laughs> now, you see, the, the adult humor is highly hidden in here. And even if you, if the kid, there's just, there's silly, funny humor in here to go, it's nothing different than what you would see. It's haha -ha funny humor that you would see in a, in a cartoon. Funny cartoons. Now, really, the adult humor is really well hidden within these games. You don't have to worry about letting your little kid play them, really. I would highly recommend this to anyone of any age. This is a very good game series. Don't worry about the adult humor. Also, if you're really that worried about the adult humor, and you want to know a little bit of the, of the cultural references also, I'm subscribed to a user by the, names of, by the name of Thumbs Up Master. He made videos showing, uh, questioning the E rating to these games in a funny way. Now, those show all the adult humor references. If you're that worried about your kids seeing those adult references, by all means look at his videos. He covers all the adult humor. But trust me, there's no way a, a kid like five years old is going to notice the adult references. Or the adult jokes. If anything, they're just... The jokes are just puns off of the actual jokes. So the kid will only take it based on the pun. They won't recognize the actual inside dirty humor to them. But anyway, I'm, I'm wasting time with... It's already... I only covered two games and we're almost into seven minutes. Now... Oh, next up is the original, the very first Paper Mario. I like this game more than the other two. The reason being this one has... I don't know. The other two just don't have the charm that this one does. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Again, this is a game that I would recommend to anyone who likes Mario. Makes me wonder, though, since in Mario RPG, I believe that game came right before this one. It would have been funny to see a nod towards that, you know, like, Peach saying, you know, we just help you get your fortress back, and then you go and take my castle and pull it up into the air with the star rod, sort of thing, you know? That would be pretty funny, and please excuse the horrible Peach voice. I am not Chuck Conroy, or Regno, or anyone else who does LPs. Next up we have uh, Mario Kart 64, the very first Mario Kart game. I remember playing this with my dad and my sister, and they get used to get so annoyed because I would kick their asses every time at this game. I'm pretty good at racing games, despite not being too... I don't know. I like games where you have a basic point to it. Now, I like racing games. I, I play them every so often, but I just prefer games with a plot and a point to them, aside from racing. Which is why I like the fact that you can get trophies. And yes, I have gotten the gold trophy in every single race this... Someone came on and their sign on s noise is a rocket. Um, I got all the trophies for all the different uh, engine races. If you like, if you want to try out the game that started, choose whether to be on or off. Jeez. If you want to try out the game that started the very first uh, of the series, go ahead and try this out. The very first Mario Kart game. And we are only four games into this, and I have to stop. Jeez.